In the very heart of London, where centuries of tradition meet the rhythm of marching boots, lives a regiment unlike any other. The Household Cavalry, guardians of royal ceremony and protectors of a legacy that rides on four legs. Every morning, the cobbled courtyards behind Buckingham Palace echo with the sound of polished hooves. Hundreds of royal horses stand in perfect formation, calm, disciplined, majestic. Each one is trained to remain still through crowds, drums, and the roar of traffic. To the untrained eye, they look almost mechanical, pure control. But beneath the uniform and the gleaming harness lies something wild, something ancient. Even within the most elite training schools on earth, instinct still whispers. And sometimes when approached too suddenly, that instinct awakens. A twitch, a lunge, a kick. Not out of defiance, but survival. To understand why, we have to step back, far beyond London, to the open grasslands where horses first evolved. For more than 50 million years, horses survived not by aggression, but by reaction. Their entire nervous system is built for one purpose, to detect danger and respond before it strikes. It's called the fight or flight reflex, and it's hardwired into every horse alive today. A horse's eyes sit on the sides of its head, giving it nearly 350 degrees of vision, but there's a blind spot directly behind its tail and right in front of its face. When something suddenly enters that unseen zone, a hand, a camera, a child, the brain doesn't pause to think, it acts. Muscles tighten, adrenaline floods the body, and in less than a quarter of a second, the leg fires backward. It's not a choice. It's nature's fastest decision. The Royal Mews, the training stables of the British monarchy, are designed to bring order to that wild energy. Here, young horses learn to carry armor, endure applause, and march inches apart in perfect sync. Trainers spend months desensitizing them to noise, flashes, and sudden movements. They learn discipline, patience, and poise. But no amount of training can erase the reflex. Royal trainers don't try to remove it. They learn to work with it, because that same lightning-fast reaction is what once saved soldiers on battlefields. A horse that senses danger faster than its rider can mean the difference between life and death. For the public, the royal horse stands as a symbol of obedience. But for trainers, it's a conversation between instinct and discipline. Every flick of the ear is a message. Every step backward is a question. The rider's task is not to silence the horse, but to listen. In this delicate balance lies the secret of the Royal Cavalry's strength. The horse obeys commands, yet never forgets the world beyond the palace gates. A world where movement means survival. Royal training teaches discipline, Instinct teaches survival, and together they create the perfect guardian of the crown. The next time you stand before a royal guard horse, still, silent, shining in armor, remember that inside that calm exterior beats the heart of a prey animal, a creature forever tuned to danger, forever loyal to its reflex. In the next part, we'll witness how this instinct reveals itself in the real world. From viral tourist encounters to rare moments caught on camera, Proof that even the most royal of horses still answers to nature's oldest law. They stand as symbols of discipline, silent, still, unshaken. But even the most royal of horses can only hold calm for so long. Because instinct doesn't vanish, it waits. And sometimes all it takes is one wrong step. It was supposed to be a harmless photo, a tourist, a phone, and a horse that seemed carved from bronze. But when the visitor leaned in too close, the horse's ears pinned back and its head swung with forceful precision. A flash of teeth, a startled gasp, no injury, but a clear message. You've crossed the line. Experts call it the proximity reflex. For horses, personal space is survival space. When that invisible circle is breached, instinct commands them to react before they even understand what's happening. Not aggression, says equine behaviorist Dr. Alice Harding. It's communication, 
a very ancient language that humans forgot how to read. The crowd gasped. One of the horses flinched, stamping backward. It was just a moment, a ripple of instinct that reminded everyone. This calm is earned, not guaranteed. In the wild, that sound would have been thunder or a predator's pounce. The horse's brain made no distinction. The same reflex that once kept its ancestors alive in the open plains now fires in the shadow of Buckingham Palace. Even the royal setting cannot silence biology, explains Captain James Rowe, a veteran cavalry trainer. They're trained to trust, but never to forget their prey animals. The guard's calm hand did more than command obedience. It spoke reassurance, because for horses, trust is not built through dominance, but consistency. To outsiders, it looked like a scuffle. But for riders, it was simply one horse reminding another of boundaries. In a parade where horses march inches apart, even a tiny shift in body position can trigger tension. The bite wasn't an act of hostility. It was a correction, a quick reminder of space and rank. Horses establish order the way humans use tone, explains trainer Rachel Dunbar. A light bite, a shove, it's not a fight, it's hierarchy maintenance. It's nature's way of saying, I need room. And even on royal ground, nature still speaks first. The shout startled the crowd, but it wasn't anger, it was protection. A kick from a startled horse, even a small one, can be fatal. And that's something the guards know better than anyone. People see calm and think control, says Dr. Harding again. But calm is a performance, one built on trust, distance and respect. The guard's warning was not against curiosity, it was against carelessness. A simple misunderstanding can turn a royal encounter into a dangerous one. Each of these moments, a swing of the head, a kick, a bite, follows a clear biological pattern. When pressure enters a horse's blind zone, sensory neurons trigger the spinal reflex arc. The brain doesn't decide, the body does. In less than 0.2 seconds, faster than any human reaction, the horse's muscles contract to defend its space. It's not disobedience, it's evolution. For the royal trainers, understanding these signals is key. Pinned ears, warning, raised tail, agitation, ears flicking backward and forward, uncertainty. Learning to read these cues prevents conflict and builds trust. To approach a horse safely, says Captain Rowe, you don't need control, you need respect. Each reaction, each instinctive movement, tells a story millions of years old, one that connects royal courtyards to wild savannas. These horses are not just part of a ceremony, they are living symbols of balance between obedience and nature. In the next part, we'll discover why the royal trainers keep this instinct alive and how it protects not only the rider, but the crown itself. Every movement of a royal horse, from a simple breath to a sudden kick, carries history within it. A story older than any kingdom, older than any crown. It's the story of survival, written in muscle, memory, and motion. The reflex that never fails long. Before these horses marched through the streets of London, their ancestors roamed open plains, alert, vulnerable, free. Predators tested them every day, and only those who could sense danger before it arrived survived to see another sunrise. That instinct, the fight or flight reflex, is not just a reaction. It's the blueprint of their existence. And even here, beneath the crown's grandeur, it remains untouched. When people see a royal horse stand still in chaos, explains Dr. Harding, what they don't realize is that it's not fearlessness, it's controlled instinct. The same system that once saved its ancestors is now refined, disciplined, and trusted. It's not something humans taught horses. It's something horses taught humans. Centuries of warfare and ceremony have depended on this perfect collaboration. The human provides direction. The horse provides intuition. In the age of knights, horses were shields before shields existed. They carried kings into war, and they carried soldiers home. 
A horse that spooked too easily meant defeat, but a horse that didn't react fast enough meant death. So the royal stables didn't breed out the instinct. They honed it. They shaped reflex into reliability. And what once defended a warrior now protects a royal guard. Today, the sound of drums has replaced the clash of swords, but the heartbeat beneath the saddle remains the same. The horses still sense what we can't. They still read human body language, smell adrenaline, detect fear, and mirror emotion. Science shows that horses can pick up subtle heart rate changes in people standing nearby. A reminder that trust for them is biological, not just emotional. In every ceremony, the royal horse performs a paradox, absolute obedience, driven by absolute instinct. Their discipline is not submission, it's cooperation. They don't suppress nature, they harmonize with it. That's what makes them royal, not their title, but their balance. When a royal horse reacts, kicks, bites, or flinches, it isn't a flaw in training. It's a reminder that nature cannot and should not be erased. Even in the most civilized of places, the wild still breathes beneath the surface. To understand horses, Captain Rowe once said, you must stop trying to control them and start trying to understand what they're telling you. Respect replaces dominance. Awareness replaces fear. And that's the foundation of trust, the same trust that keeps both horse and human safe day after day. The instinct that makes a horse kick is the same one that has protected humanity for centuries. Awareness, reaction, balance. We often see the royal horse as part of tradition, but in truth, it's a living teacher, reminding us that nature doesn't vanish under ceremony. It adapts within it. Each reflex, each breath, is a dialogue between worlds the human and the wild, the crown and the creature, order and instinct. And maybe that's why the royal horses continue to inspire awe. Because they show us what we often forget, that control is never the opposite of instinct, it's the harmony with it. So the next time you walk past the royal guards, remember the strength behind their stillness? That calm is not just training, it's trust. That silence is not emptiness, it's understanding and the instinct that never fails, it's still there, watching, breathing, protecting. This documentary is dedicated to every rider and trainer who listens before they lead, and every horse that reminds us that respect is the true language of command. If this story helped you see the royal horse in a new light, like, share, and subscribe for more journeys into the minds of extraordinary animals. Stay curious, stay respectful, because every creature, royal or wild, has a story worth hearing.